you know what I've been thinking and I think it's finally time that I complete the DCEU. I've been putting it on hold for a while but I've got to get this over with sooner or later. So for the next few weeks I'm going to be reviewing strictly DCEU movies until I'm finally caught up. Hopefully that works out. So let's start this off with Aquaman, which was released in 2018 and directed by James Wan. And it is about Arthur, who is Aquaman by the way, as he must reclaim his throne in Atlantis. And in order to do so, he must find the legendary trident. So to explain the title a bit, I think this is probably the reprise of the DCEU. Considering at this point, people were starting to get a lot of more faith into this franchise. And since this movie released, it was quite the success. Fans loved it, you know, lots of money. And I think because of that, it kind of did offer a bit of a revival. So let's see what this movie's all about. So Aquaman can be best described as a cheesy, fun action adventure. And it really does capture the spirit of Aquaman really well because if you don't know, he's quite of a meme superhero and I'm glad that they didn't take this movie into the serious Dark Knight route and rather had a little bit of fun with his character. However, this movie is rather formulaic. Like for example, think of every single cliche that could be possible in an action adventure. Aquaman probably has almost every one of those cliches. And to me, it just feels like James Wan is just trying to play it safe. You know, since this is his first big blockbuster superhero movie, he didn't really want to make it flop. And I get that, but I feel like if we're going to do a movie like this, you might as well go all out, you know? The pacing of this movie is also very, very fast, like almost a breakneck. And I think that this movie should have been longer, like probably three hours, especially since they're trying to cover a lot of things in this plot that just doesn't really fit. And the pacing is actually so fast that I feel like so many scenes just happen without any context and this might just be an editing issue they might have deleted a lot of scenes to trim down on time but I do feel like a lot of things happen that makes me feel like wait we're already here that type of deal So Arthur is pretty cool, I mean he's played by Jason Momoa, of course he's gonna be cool, but his arc in this story is pretty basic to be honest. Like it's your usual, I don't want to become the higher to the throne and then he gotta accept he becomes the higher to the throne type deal. And his chemistry with Mero is incredibly forced. I don't know what it is with Hollywood, but they think that good romantic chemistry means bickering. I don't know where this started and I'm not saying that it's wrong, like sometimes it does work, but in some cases it just feels so so cliched and this is exactly uh, one of its examples. The side characters are also very basic, they do exactly what you expect them to do. Almost every single character here had something that I predicted about them or something that they would do. Antagonist as well is pretty cliche. He's actually two cliches rolled in one. The one being that, oh I'm an evil brother who is not in line for the throne but wants it anyway cliche, and the other one being that I am like the product of humanity's pollution trying to come back at them cliche. It really feels like they're trying to make him sympathetic when really he's just your average power hungry lunatic. So now the other antagonist here was Black Manta and he feels incredibly unnecessary. I don't know what they included him for, like everything he's related to feels like just a setup for a sequel to be honest. And maybe it's just for the money and toys because Black Manta is quite the popular character so they probably just included him just for that I guess marketing factor. And once again you can really see that James Wan is just trying to play it safe with the characters as well. Like he's not trying to make any big risks with their characters, anything that make them too drastically different from the comics or the rest of the DCEU. So the presentation of this movie feels rather amateurish. It feels like somebody gave a couple of people studying visual effects a blockbuster budget and said, okay, make something. Like the CGI is incredibly wonky, camera work is very bland, and the editing is rather choppy. The soundtrack as well is incredibly basic, it feels like your usual superhero soundtrack. And this is a big gripe I've had with this genre in general, is I feel like their presentation is so uninspired. And I feel like that's one of the main reasons why people love the Batman so much, is because it's so stylized and it feels like a movie that just happens to be a superhero movie rather than this one which is a superhero movie which happens to be a movie, you know? But in general, I just feel like this should have been more silly with the presentation, you know, just went all out. And this is just a criticism I can make with both the story and the characters, I feel like they're way too closed in. <laughs> So in conclusion, I'd give Aquaman a 5 out of 10. It's not good, but it's not bad either, and that's because it at least has a clear story. 
a clear set of characters and a clear presentation so i can't give it anything lower than this but at the same time it doesn't do anything more like every other movie that's above a 5 out of 10 does and i feel like if this movie had been a lot more silly and a lot more stylized i feel like a lot of people would have loved it more you know just lean into the campiness side of movies and i think this movie could have been a cult classic so i'd recommend this movie if you want a basic action adventure with nothing else like that's pretty much all i can really describe it as and although aquaman is nowhere as bad as i expected it to be it is also nowhere near the top as well it is effectively one of the most average movies i have ever seen